we still gonna dance today. Hallelujah. You got time to get your flags. You got time to get something in your hands and wave it. Hallelujah.
Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome, welcome once again to Mount Bethel Church of God, where our senior pastors are Bishop Dr. Cecil G. and Reverend Dolores Mullings. We're so glad that we're able to come into your homes today and to worship with you. So join with us as we sing, clap your hands, do your dance. It's all for his glory. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's just put our hands together. If you know he's the Alpha and the Omega, just lift your hands, stomp your feet, give him a praise this morning. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. could ever give hallelujah thank you God and I know that in these times I found God to be just so awesome there's nothing that my God cannot do he is awesome anybody else have that testimony that he's awesome hallelujah 
awesome God. Hallelujah, you're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. Hallelujah, we serve a mighty God, a mighty God. Hallelujah. God indeed is awesome. If he's awesome, just give him some worship at home. Just confuse the enemy where you are right now, whether you're listening in your car or if you're still at work. Let's give God praise for he indeed is awesome. Truly he is awesome. Awesome in our porch. Awesome in our backyard. Awesome despite the circumstance. Awesome even in this time of quarantine. Our God is awesome. I'm going to read for you from Philippians 4, verse 4 through 8 this morning. And we're just going to stay in line with God being awesome and indeed worthy of praise. Again, Philippians 4, and I'll read from 4 to 8, and you know it. You know it well. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I know it's hard when you look at your circumstance, but rejoice in the Lord. Paul said he's learned in every state, in every condition that he's in, to give God praise. For surely, God is worthy. If we win, God is worthy. If we lose, God is still worthy. Our Reverend Craig preached, and he said, like the three Hebrew boys said, even if our God doesn't deliver, he is still worthy. If we don't make it out of this furnace, if we don't make it out of this fire, if we don't make it out of this circumstance, guess what? At the end of the day, rejoice in the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, God. We give your name all of the glory and all of the praise that you indeed are worthy of. We thank you, Lord Jesus, as we look at the times, God, we see that you are at work. We see, Lord God, that the coming of age is coming. We see that your time is drawing nigh, God, and we just want to say thank you. We just want to say, Lord God, thank you for keeping us to this point. Thank you for keeping our loved ones to this point. Everything may not be good, but we thank you, Lord God, that we can still say as righteous people that it is well. We can still speak to our circumstances, Lord God, and say indeed it is well. We can still rejoice in whatsoever circumstance we are in. And so I pray for my brothers and sisters at home, that one that is cast down, that one that doesn't know where to go. I pray for them, Lord, that they would find a path to rejoice always, that they would find, Lord God, a, a way to set their minds on those things that are lovely, those things that are pure, those things that are of a good report. And we thank you, Lord, that in all these things, we are in your hands. We are your creation. And we give your name praise and we give your name thanks. For you indeed are worthy of our praise. In Jesus' mighty and most precious name, we say, amen. Thank you for being a part of the ministry here at Mount Bethel Church of God. If you would like to donate financially, here are the ways that you can give. Firstly, if you're in the area, you can always drop off your donation in the mailbox by the office doors. Don't forget to put your name on the envelope. Secondly, you can text the word GIVE to 855-980-6025. Text the word GIVE to the number on your screen. We also take donations by PayPal. Our PayPal address is donate at mtbethelcog.org. You can also use Cash App. Our Cash App address is mtbethelcog. Don't forget the dollar sign. 
Or you can always contact me, Reverend Jackie, for credit card payments over the phone. God bless you. And again, thank you for being a part of the ministry here at Mount Bethel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just bless the name of the Lord? Can we just worship and offer him up some praise? Thank you, God. As we sang earlier, he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And he's been so good to us. It could be another way, but God has been good. So we endeavor today to give him our best praise. We will give him all the glory because it's due unto his name. Hallelujah. We will worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are worthy, God.
worship you. Bishop Dr. Cecil G. Mullings, a one-of-a-kind pastor anointed and appointed to do exploits in the kingdom of God. He is the senior pastor of this great church, Mount Bethel Church of God, where you enter with a praise and leave with a miracle. He is guiding us to impact the community and preparing us to stretch beyond our limits and boundaries. Mount Bethel, please help me honor our senior pastor, Bishop Dr. Cecil G. Mullings. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank God for a different morning that we can say thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy. Oh, we are stepping down. Soon we'll be meeting in the church to worship and to magnify the name of the Lord. This morning, I just want to let you know God has been good. He is good and he will always 
Amen. I just want to greet those who are watching us by live stream in different countries and also those who are at home who are sick and want to pray for them that they will receive their healing as soon as possible instantaneously and I hope that after this word is gone through you will be blessed let's bow our heads and pray Father we thank you and we glorify you and we magnify you you're an awesome God and because of that we want to worship you for your glory, for your mercies, and your healing that you've brought on your people. I pray, dear God, that you'll just strengthen us and watch over us as we go into the service. Let some heart be blessed, somebody be saved, listening to us. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to look this morning to the word of the Lord and it is taken from Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 7 and uh, it speaks about the glory fight Lord and you know the song that we love to sing is that holy 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 Lord God almighty and it is important to understand that he is holy and he is our God Almighty. The book of Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 through 7 is a text that makes a time of political evil and a time of despair, a time of difficulties in ancient Israel in order for us to understand what was going on, we have to understand that Isaiah saw it. And he uh, said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. This text occur close to the reign of the greatest king uh, in Israel, Uzziah. He reigned for 52 years, and he was a successful king. The name Uzziah means the strength of the Lord. Oh, we should name our children that, boys. The strength of the Lord. This king also has another name referred to in the book of Chronicles. And as Chronicles, uh, um, Second Kings, and uh, verse 14 to 21. When you read about Uzziah or Azariah, he reigned for 52 years. They are the same person. Azariah means Jehovah is our keeper or Jehovah hath helped us. I have received many things about the keeper. This man reigned for 52 years, probably the second most popular and prosperous king who reigned in Judea, apart from Solomon. And the history indicates that he was the greatest king that lived. He ascended into the throne at age 60. I know nowadays we would say, Oh, he's just too young. He can't reign. He can't rule. But when God chooses you or take you out of an age group and put you into whatever, he is the one who takes care of you. He was a wise king and a powerful king. He extended Judea territory and brought nations in time of great prosperity. In the south, the Mediterranean, he controlled over Edom and rebuilt 
part of the facility at Ezra and on the Gulf of Agaba. The foolishness of Isaiah, or um, Azariah, the father of, father of Amazon, in fighting Joshua, the king of Israel, had left the city of Jerusalem and in a numberable position, here is the king of Israel or Jerusalem in the time when prosperity, a portion, had left and uh, the, the people were there wondering what is going to take place. But you know, I, uh, the book of Isaiah, it talks clearly about the, the Lord Jesus Christ. It talks about, he said, in the year uh, that his, uh, King Isaiah died, he saw the Lord. And we're talking about how great God is. And oh, he's an awesome God. And uh, we got to understand that the, the, the book of Isaiah has so many uh, history, such as the history of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it tells us that he is going to be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the King of, of Praise. Um, is, we've got to understand the army was... A well-equipped and fortified army. We got to notice because he sought the Lord through a prophet who encouraged him to honor and obey God. He was a time of prosperity, and he said the average citizen has a, another home which is used for winter. So the people around. Uh, the time of the reign of Uzziah, it means that they were rich. Even the media were rich. The young ones were rich. Have a winter home down there in South Jersey. But everything, everyone has to know that it was prosperity in those days. Everything that Uzziah did, God blessed. Isn't it awesome? In our country that we're living in, we're going through hard times. We're going through times when we are facing losing a lot of our jobs. And uh, so, many, so many millions of people are out of job. But I come to say today that our provider, our God, is going to see us through. The problem with most of us is that we want to be more, to get more than we have. But God sometimes has to stop us and let us realize that he is God. And he is blessing us. He blessed your desire. When God places you into a position, he will bless. He will, he will honor his word. And I'm positively sure that God is going to honor the Christian's word of prayer. We've been praying for months. And I believe that there is going to be a revival. A revival not just for our local church, but for all over the world. Because every creature pray. They pray and they pray. And I'm saying, I'm asking us to remember that prayer changed things. Not only does it change things, it keeps us going. Uh, Maybe most of us has never prayed like we have prayed before. Many of us have never prayed so much reading our Bible as we have. Every second person that you will talk to, oh, uh, talk about Jehovah God. And I'm here to tell you today that Jesus is alive. And uh, the, 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 the people that is around us can say they see God. The, the atheists will ask, where is God? Where is your God? But they're calling upon our God because every president, every prime minister, every leader in the world is saying to the church, pray, 
that God will allow this virus to leave. So you know God stopped it so that we can understand that he is God. And I'm so proud of our God. I'm so proud of our churches. And I'm so proud of our church leaders who are asking us to pray. And I will not stop praying because God is about to do something marvelous for us. When you look at that scripture, you find out that it was there, that uh, it was a compartment uh, that we looked at. It was, there's an outer court and an inner court and the most holy of holies. And uh, for them to enter, they've got to go through these courts. And the inner court and the outer court and the most holy court where the golden candlestick, the Bible says that Uzziah came into the temple and went beyond the outer court into the most holy court. We've got to understand that it was not his job to go into the inner court. He was supposed to stay out of there. But he, he, he was so uh, uh, enthused that he was a blessed man. He was one of the most holy men he felt like. But he went into the inner court. And he came to a conclusion that since he worshipped his, uh, since he whipped his enemies, everything which he did was successful. But it was only successful because he was solicited the help of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, he felt like, no, I am it. Uh, just like the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar. I did this. I did that. And we look into the world, we see many leaders who are not saying God did it, but they're saying, I did it, I did it. But I want to let them realize they can't do anything unless God permit them to do. As I was lifted up in pride and no longer satisfied to be, more, to be a moral king, he deserved to be like some of his compatriots in other uh, countries or other neighboring countries around. He, um, we find out that in the Bible it says that he attempted to burn incense. Oh, Holy Spirit. He was out of his place to enter the temple, but he started to burn incense so strong. Men uh, powerful uh, with all that. He said, I can do this, but you're not permitted to do that. But it was in the year that King Uzziah died. Oh, I, the, the, he saw the Lord. The, the, the prophet saw the Lord. And he did not only see the Lord, he was high and lifted up. And train filled the temple. People out of God should get up and approach people who are polluting the temple of the house of God. Preaching isn't a, a, a paid position or a job. It is an assignment by God. And God has assigned us to speak the word for him. Stand up, Christian, and, just, and let your voice be heard. You are the children of God. And I, I just want to let you know that the territory that we're in, the country that we're in, we are there as an object to worship and to preach and to make known of the work of God. God is a powerful God. And uh, the pulpit may be closed uh, for the past couple of months, but the voice of God is not closed. It's time for the Christians to lift up their voice and let it be heard. Uh, obey the law of God. And obey the country that we're in. But most of all, we've got to lift up Jesus. You know, God is the almighty one. He will step in and do best for us. He's a God that heals leprosy. 
He's a God that heals cancer. He's a God that speaks on behalf of his children. And I'm saying to anyone who is hearing my voice and listening to me, don't be like um, your desire. Go beyond where he's supposed to go. He should stay in the outer court. But he decided since he can fight men, since he, as he win the war, he's going to go on the in the inner court of the temple. No siree. It's time for the church to lift up Jesus. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Isaiah was saying, um, uh, Uzziah was saying, I'm like Christ. I am like him. Uh, and I know so many people out there, uh, you can hear people said, I am the the, the, the chosen one. I am the, the great one. But there's no such thing as a great one on earth. Jehovah God, he is the great one. Uh, tell somebody that he is the king of kings. Tell somebody that the Lord God reigns. And I believe that people who are listening to me, they got to be somebody out there who's not saved, who can say, I can raise my hands and say, Jehovah God is alive. He's alive yesterday. He's alive today. And he will be alive tomorrow. He's the God that rules the nation. He's the God that is powerful. He's the God that will take care of the situation. Because he lives. Your future is in his hands. Uh, um, America, England, wherever the country is, it, uh, is one of the thing that we got to say we don't depend on a country because they are great we depend on Jesus Judah started to lament but God as a prophet uh, Judah was saying my riches my gold and my silver uh, that was in Jerusalem uh, we were rich we had, we had a winter house here and we have a home here but things are getting worse when the nation turn from God, oh, something will happen to the nation. They will start losing out. But I come today to tell you, thank God he stopped us so that we can ask him which direction to go. We can say to him, what are we, where are we going and how long it's going to be? I believe the rapture is soon to be here. But before the rapture comes, I believe we are going to have one of the greatest revival that we have ever seen. He says, in the year that King Uzziah died, that's what he said. The Lord, Isaiah said, he saw the Lord. He saw him. He was not low, but he was high and lifted up. And train filled this temple. He saw the Lord. He were not told that, he, did you see him? He saw the Lord. He saw him. He was high and lifted up. And train filled the temple. God is a spirit. And we who are worship him have to worship him in spirit and in truth. In the chapter, he saw that he was the uh, Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. The name ruler means over. Isaiah saw him sitting. He was high and lifted up. People, we can't sit back uh, low and uh, uh, at the bottom. We got to see the King of Kings high and lifted, lifted up. <laughs> Isaiah died, but God is still alive. He's on his throne. Within his bosom, he has a phone. And he can hear us when we call. Years and years ago, there was just line phone. But right now, we've got cell phone. Every, even a baby it, it can use a cell phone. They can they look at the games and all that. But we can use our phone to call Jesus, not the regular phone, but the telephone to heaven, never, ever get busy. Millions is calling upon him, and he's there to answer. Uh, you call your friend, and the phone line becomes busy. But Jesus' phone line has never been busy. He's always here ready to hear us when we cry. 
Isaiah is gone, but Jesus is still alive. You may be suffering with an illness, cancer, blood pressure, diabetes, all kind of ailments. But I'm saying we've got to lift up Jesus. He said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. It don't matter what the doctor says. You've seen Jesus. It doesn't matter what the lawyer said. My God reigns. A question was asked by Sojourner Ruth. Is God dead? The answer is no. Then I have a possibility. If he is still alive, everything is going to be all right. I want to say to you today, whose report do you believe? Whose report do you believe? Oh, the enemy wants us to believe that Jesus does not yield. Jesus does not deliver. Oh, I want to say he is a deliverer. Sometimes we are faced with a, a lot of difficulties. But I want to say in the year that King Uzziah died, we saw the Lord. No more idol worship. No more uh, taking it into consideration that he is the best thing. I want to let the church know and those who are listening to me know that although you may be going through the valley of the shadow of death and come and you're not able to come out, look what Psalms 23 says. Uh, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Goodness and mercy is with you. Isaiah was just an observer but although he was, he stated, he had to praise the Lord in every situation. If you can get a glimpse of Jesus and start to praise him, everything will be all right. He saw him and he said the seraphims and the, the word seraph means burning one or flames of fire. The creature that was around the throne of God was a fire. You can't get to God uh, with, with your sins and, and, and what have you. But we want to let you know that the angels was crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Our God is not dead. He is alive. The Bible said he is alive. He is alive and well. And I want to bring it out to you today. That although you may be going through, you can still cry, holy, holy is the Lord. And the angels are singing holy. And let me tell you, when we start to sing holy, smoke of the Holy Spirit is going to fill the temple. It's time for the church to arise to our responsibility and start to praise God. When I look at what happened and the virus stopped everyone from even opening and going to, uh, to the building to worship, I said, thank you, God, that I know you for myself. Every Christian, every believer has to know God for themselves. They can't know the preacher is not in your house. The preacher is not traveling with you, but the Holy Spirit travels with you. Come on, church folks. It's time for you to start lifting up Jesus. You have a right to worship him. You have a right to exalt him. Let those that know how to worship, let those that know when to worship and who to worship, start to worship him. Because let me say to you in my closing, life is a series of challenges. Just when you think that you've got a grip of things and new challenges come through, it's time for you to make it right. Uh, use your mind to get limiting and negative thoughts out of your way. Renew your attitude and let God be the God to you and for you. He is coming back again. And I trust that something that I said today will got a hold of you. The Bible says, holy, holy, holy. He is holy. No matter what we're going through, he is a holy God. May God bless you today. I feel wonderful 
that I can share this with you. Let the church be the church. And let God be God. And no matter what you're going through, trust him that everything will be all right. Father, we bless you and we worship and we glorify you. You're an awesome God and heaven and earth will pass away. Oh God, but nothing can come now you're dwelling. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every fears, uh, every fear that will come among the people of God. Those who are sitting down and uh, the enemy brings the fear upon your life and uh, say to you, you're not going to get through this. Uh, uh, oh, uh, um, the, 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 the result of the test is dangerous. But I'm saying today, rise up and say to yourself, whose report do you believe? I believe the report of the Lord. I bind every forces of darkness. I come against every plans of the enemy. I pull down the stronghold. I let the enemy know that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. And I say to him, I'm healed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb that nothing can destroy me because I've got a promise from the heavenly father that say ye, say ye to the righteous it shall be well and I'm saying to somebody today it is well it is well it is well when peace like a river attendeth my way oh my God I know it is well it is well it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my body I'm healed I'm delivered I'm set free and I know I'm gonna have a good tweak because Jesus saved me I want to thank you Lord for what you've done for us here in Mount Bethel and for those that are listening I say thank you oh the resurrected power I say thank you the I am that I am I say thank you Jehovah Jireh I say thank you Jehovah Shalom I say thank you oh please Holy Spirit please give peace to those who need peace please bring joy to those who need joy we lift you up and glorify your name because in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And I'm still seeing you high and lifted up and train fill the temple. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God bless you, saints. God bless you, listeners. And I sincerely hope that you have a great week in the Lord. Shalom. your right hand. And now, may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, remain, and abide with you all, both now and forever. Don't leave yet. We've got a song to remind you of. Amen. God has spoken. So let the church say, Amen.
Thank you for worshiping with us today. Before you go, we wanted you to know that if you do not know the Lord as your personal Savior or you're in need of prayer, feel free to reach out to us. You can call or text the number listed below. That number is 609-531-8388. A member of our ministerial team will be glad to pray with you and encourage you in the Lord. Again, thank you for worshiping with us. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless you.